Good morning. It's a real pleasure to be here. This is my first time to attend this conference, and uh, it was the meeting that uh, you just heard about that spurred me to come to this. So I'm pleased to be able to tell you a little bit about the geological survey, and I'm going to start with a... I know my time is short here this morning. I'm going to start with a very short uh, video introduction to our program uh, to the national map, and um, it, it will uh, be followed by just a handful of slides, and I'll, I'll try to fill in the gaps that the video leaves in, in describing our program to you. So if you would roll the video and then we'll go from there. Maps, a foundation of geographic knowledge to help us navigate the world, explore, protect and sustain our resources, save lives, and preserve these lands for our children. As part of the Department of the Interior, the United States Geological Survey has led the way in mapping the nation. Mapping goes hand in hand with American history, the exploration of the West, and the development of our country. The government cannot do any scientific work of more value to the people at large than by causing the construction of proper topographic maps of the country. In 1884, John Wesley Powell established a program for mapping the nation and helped define the new frontier. Over the next 125 years, mapping methods changed as the use and technology matured evolving from field sketching and manual cartography to producing paper maps, then modernizing to digital mapping using the latest geospatial technologies. Maps are the heart and soul of what we do here at National Geographic. We were founded in 1888, and almost from the very beginning, we worked closely with the U.S. Geological Survey for accurate and authoritative base maps of our country. Now in digital form, maps are constantly changing and that's a, a very exciting opportunity for us. We can take those data layers in the national map, things like roads and buildings and rivers, and we can shape them and customize them and serve various audiences on new platforms in ways that we could never have imagined even just a few years ago. Born from the digital revolution is the national map. Today, the national map is everywhere. When you see computer simulations of the Earth's surface, you are likely looking at data from the national map. It's fundamental data. It's familiar information we use every day and may not even know it. Today, geospatial technologies are advancing the way we are thinking as human species. The USGS has done us a major service by providing a key base map which spans from sea to sea, from border to border. This will affect how we plan things, it'll affect economic development, it'll make our society better, it'll help us manage our environment more effectively and get citizens engaged. Uh, I really strongly support the national map and the efforts that USGS is making to provide this foundation. The national map provides foundational information nationwide. These include aerial imagery, elevation, place and feature names, water, land cover, transportation, structures, and boundaries. With innovative services like the new National Map Viewer Platform, a user can visualize data they want to download or manipulate and make their own map. Another new product built on the USGS legacy and data from the National Map is US Topo. US Topo provides updated electronic topographic maps that are available at nationalmap.gov. To acquire and maintain better data, the national map relies heavily on partnerships with federal, state, and local agencies, along with industry. With huge challenges ahead in the areas of energy, emergency operations, human services, and natural resource management, finding solutions will depend on stewardship of geospatial data. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency works with many different organizations to provide the nation with clean and safe water. Together, we collect a vast amount of water quality data. The mapping of water data is accomplished in partnership with the U.S. Geological Survey. This partnership led to the development of the National Hydrography Data Set that provides a common referencing system of the nation's surface waters. 
the federal and state organizations who work together to develop the National Hydrography Data Set now also contribute to its improvement through the National MAPS Data Stewardship Program. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is one of many organizations that benefit from the geospatial data from the National MAP. The National Map of the Future will offer more innovations and online capabilities, increased investment in stewardship, leading to greater knowledge and easier accessibility to national geospatial information for everyone. At the USGS, we are committed to forward-looking advanced research and development of geospatial technologies. With the support of our partners, the National Map provides valuable data and services to meet the changing needs of our nation. The future holds endless possibilities for using maps and geo-referenced data sets, allowing citizens and scientists alike to explore the true nature of our planet's geography. To learn more about the National Map and how to become a valuable partner, visit www.nationalmap.com. Gov. So thank you for that. If you would switch to the PowerPoint now, I'd appreciate that. So that's just a brief introduction, and I'll, uh, I'll just try to hit some of the highlights of uh, what message we want to deliver um, to you here today. And that, that is a couple things. First, why, why the USGS is involved in mapping? Because we, we, we do provide the authoritative and accurate base map for others, whether they're government agencies, citizens, or non-governmental non organizations, provides that common accurate base map as a starting point. Also, my message to this audience in particular is that although we come from a proud tradition, some of which you saw depicted on the slides here, we are all about the future. And we honestly believe that this is probably the most exciting time in the history of uh, our organization to be in the mapping business. Um, we, we are incredibly excited to participate with new organizations with whom we've, we've not partnered in the past. I just want to give you two names to, uh, of points of contact who are here at the conference. If you're interested in working with USGS on developing applications or, or interested in um, exploring our data, uh, we are participating in the WARE camp. And Eric Wolf will be there along with a number of technical uh, folks from the Geological Survey. Please contact Eric if you want to uh, work at WHERE Camp on USGS data. And if you're interested in becoming a partner with the Geological Survey, um, Vicki Lucas is here in the audience somewhere today, and she's our partnerships lead. Find Vicki Lucas and let her know you'd like to be a partner if, if that's the case. Um, so we introduced our um, delivery mechanism to you. This is a, a graphic of that uh, geo portal. It's in beta right now. You can see we're scheduled to go um, uh, out of beta on April 15th. It's a very uh, direct way to access, download, visualize the digital databases that comprise the national map that you, you heard about in the film uh, just a moment ago. You can also, through this same viewer interface, not only vi visualize and download data, but you can download products like the electronic topographic map that was described earlier. Um, those are directly accessible and downloadable for free through this interface. This is an example of what that product looks like. It's an electronic topographic map. It's a geo-PDF. Um, it's, it's we're doing this to make the data more convenient for the non-GIS uh, user out there. People are very accustomed to using maps from the USGS. We're assembling out of our digital databases these electronic maps, putting them up on the web and making them there uh, available for download for free. Uh, you can see that one thing that's different about this map from the old USGS topo maps is it has an image as a base. And I'm very lucky to follow the Digital Globe presentation because a very good uh, explanation of why imagery is so important. And we're including an image as a part of that map product. And GeoPDF, you're probably familiar with, virtually every computer on the planet can read a GeoPDF. If you can read PDF, you can read GeoPDF. Um, and if you want to link the, this product to your GPS unit, uh, GeoPDF allows you to do that and automatically develop tracks as you move about um, that will be overlaid on that map automatically. 
This is a, a slide that just says a couple things. One is that um, since May of 2009, we've made about 20,000 of those new GeoPDF maps and put them up online for download. Um, our total inventory of maps of the country is about 55,000. So we're on a three-year cycle. Every three years, every map gets recreated and, and posted on the website for download. Um, you, people can still get hard copy if they want it, but uh, increasingly, that's less uh, of interest. Um, th those are, that's a quick look at some of the products. Now, why does it matter that the USGS has this accurate and authoritative base map of the country? This is one example. This is a tool called the Incident Command Tool. And it was developed by the Department of Homeland Security. And what it does is it takes our surface water network, the hydrography information, um, vector data about where streams, lakes, rivers, springs, and all that are, that's a, a um, very sophisticated database, links it to the USGS stream gauge network. We operate about 7,000 stream gauges all across the country that are telemetered to satellites and brought down to a single or to a set of servers in the USGS. That, and those stream gauges monitor the flow and volume of water across the surface water network in the country. This tool allows DHS and other emergency responders to model the time interval between when a contaminant enters the stream gauge, the stream network, the water network, and when that contaminant would first reach a drinking water intake, because we have all of those mapped. And it allows them to close off drinking water intakes that would be affected by a contaminant. This is geospatial data serving the citizens of the country. And the USGS national map is the heart of that service. So future directions for us, revitalize the topographic mapping program. I think we're pretty far along the way of doing that. Very importantly for this audience, I think we see, we visualize that the nexus between social media and geospatial technologies is a real opportunity for us. Um, the, the workshop that we held in January was on volunteer provided geographic information and we are uh, very excited about moving forward with a number of uh, new and different partners, citizens, gamers, others who are geospatially and uh, otherwise enabled uh, through social media. We hope that we can continue to ignite a passion for mapping in the citizens of the country. We've done that to a small audience over the years we've been around. I think we can reach a much larger, larger audience today. And one, one of the things that was said more than 200 years ago by Thomas Jefferson, this is why I have his picture on here, that's very true today is that information is the currency of democracy. And we firmly believe in the geological survey that geospatial information is a part of that currency of democracy. Citizens who understand their, their nation through geospatial data and, and applications uh, are better informed and better able to participate in our democratic system. So that's... Uh, part of what we, we do. We do have a volunteer program. It's called the National Map Corps. It's been a little, it's been going through some uh, revisions in the, of, of late. We are at the point of reinstituting a, a volunteer program that takes advantage of all of the technology and media that are out there today. And if you're interested in um, participating in that, let us know. The reason I picked this, a, a photograph that has some buildings on it is one of the things that volunteers can provide are those on the ground observations for instance, building use. You can, see what a build, you can see a building exists from a satellite image. You can't necessarily tell whether that's a post office or a, a UPS store or whatever, but on the ground observations can provide that kind of uh, additional attribution that people do want to see. And um, with that, I think I'm coming to the end of my time, and I'll just say thank you for your attention and put this last graphic up uh, with the question that... Uh, to, to anybody, if, if uh, it looks familiar, can anyone identify what this map is depicting? I'll tell you what it is because I can't see if I got a hand up or not. Um, John Wesley Powell was introduced to you at the, in the video. This is a map he made in the 1800s, and it, he was a government bureaucrat at this point, and it was his proposal to the president and the Congress as to how the states in the western United States ought to be formed. And those colored polygons represent his idea of states. And what you should notice is that those colored polygons fo follow the watersheds of the western U.S. 
Powell knew instinctively that water was going to be the defining issue in the West and that political boundaries ought to follow the same rules and laws that nature follow. Uh, he did not succeed, and we have our rectangular states today. And with that, I'll say thank you very much, and it's been a pleasure to be here.